I, I found it interesting when you were being screened in Abuja. How did you manage to survive? Because they were asking for something and you had it. They were asking for something. So what does that say to people who are planning, even if they decide to go into parties that are already large and existing? Sure. What is the armory that you went to that made you survive that screening? Well, first of all, you, they, they give you a list. So you're sort of prepared. You can be prepared. But yeah, you have to keep your documentation well. Mm -hmm. You know, so one thing I didn't know was your tax clearance certificates are very important. Your primary school certificate. So even if you've gone to university, even if you have PhD and you're a professor, they don't care about all that. Show them your primary, secondary school living. It's almost as if they think you can jump to university without doing primary and secondary school. So yes, documentation Maybe is because key. they know that it's very rare that people keep such things. I think so. It's mm -hmm. all part of the exploitation. Yeah, because in my mind, I'm like, why are you insisting on primary and secondary when you can see university? Does anybody get to university without doing primary and secondary? You know, surely be logical. But they're adamant. It's like a bureaucracy. And they wanted your pay slip. They wanted pay slips, tax. Yes, a pay slip that shows how much tax was deducted. I'm like, ah, this is really serious. Yeah, they need all those things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I mean, so in all of that, you know, you sit back and you look. So what's the one word you tell somebody who wants to run? Or two words or three? <laughs> <laughs> the one thing, don't go alone. Don't go alone. I think, I think more Nigerians need to get in there, which is what is exciting me about where we're headed towards 2019. Don't go alone. You know, there's, there's, there's strength in numbers. You know, if you're really going there to do good, if you're really going there to sell an ideology or a vision of something that you want Nigeria to be or your community to be, try and go with other people. So this call of go and register for your to PVC. vote and all of that, what difference does it make? If we don't have people who are brave enough, like you, you try to run away, you don't want to go again. <laughs> Mm. Well, I wouldn't say I don't want to run again now. I'll say I don't want to run never. again now. Yes, never say never. I don't want to run again now. But I would say getting your PVC is the first step. But honestly, by the day of elections, by the day we're all standing around in March or February waving our PVCs happily, 80% of the battle for decent leadership has already been lost. It's lost because of what happens in the parties. We have no say over who the parties field. So if you're looking at a black goat, a green goat, a white goat, they're all goats. And that's the sad choice Nigerians are constantly faced with. So for me, I'm saying it's not enough. Yes, it's exciting. Get your PVC, but it's the first step towards 2023 and beyond, because we hope Nigeria will stay all our lifetime. Start thinking about joining the parties. If you're not a party member, you cannot be a delegate. If you're not a delegate, you cannot choose who the candidates will be. If you're not a party member, you cannot be a candidate. I mean, I must show you that I really read this book, see? There are all kinds of lines and notes and things I, 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 I must share with you. And pardon me if I am doing this, because I'm not selling her book, but you have to read it anyway. There's one line here that says, people like to be begged. Jamilu is one of the... This, this Jamilu is, is one my agent. Your yes, agent, my yes. Agent. Mm -hmm. Jamilu argued that I, would, that I could not disagree with. Nigeria's politics, like its roads, was littered with people begging, kneeling, and prostrating their way into office or out of paying for their reckless... You know, it's like... That's one, describing the kind of people that are going to politics. Just want to lick boots. Yes, just yeah, do anything it takes. Then you said, someone was lying to me. I knew, and the person I knew, knew I knew. <laughs> but we finished the required dance politely and let everyone continue down their path. This is after you had lost. Yeah. Somebody was telling you, don't worry, they, they, they didn't mm. even talk to you. No, and some of them, you know, because I had two constituencies, Amak and Bwari, and because we had two separate ballot boxes, even though we had asked for one, mm. and I can explain that later, but, so the Bwari people wanted me to believe they voted more for me. The Amak people wanted me to believe they voted more for me. So it was almost, do you understand? They both knew me that they had betrayed me, I'd lost though. But this I'm doing this just in case you want election. to come back. Uh, just in case, so I will know where that to start. That wasn't me, because your money. Who is more loyal to you? Uh, uh -huh. Where did you, yes, your money, exactly. Your money had gone into many hands. My money hands. had gone into many hands and they were feeling guilty. So it shows that maybe, maybe there's a conscience. Maybe. Okay. You, you said something about, in politics, if I go into politics, mint banknotes are a must. Yes, so we like The newer the notes, the greater the perception of your influence in the world. Have envelopes ready with fresh notes. That's scary. It is, but if we, ha we give money, we, I mean, to be honest, it's a bit like our culture. And I have to say that running made me feel a bit sympathetic. That yes, it is expensive to run. And it's our culture. When people come to you, they expect that you give them something to go back. And I actually tell civil society, which I'm part of, that we are also part of the problem. I go for a meeting in, in, in Abuja, and I, got, I, get, I get given transport money to go back. I'm like, what's that about? I'm here because it's something I care about. Why do I need to be paid to go back? So we've, we've poisoned our society with the thought that people can't come to anything without, yeah, yeah and go back empty-handed. You say it surprised you to find that you are going to a ward and you are walking through potholes and mud and all they are asking you for, you're telling them, I'm going to make sure that there are roads. They're asking you, what did you bring? Mm. It's that they're more concerned, what did you bring? And don't leave it and don't go 
without leaving what you brought behind. You know, nobody wants to really question you in terms of, and to be fair, to be balanced, maybe because I didn't, they didn't know me. You know, maybe they weren't expecting anything. How many people me. would you know? That means must you go where you are? No, you've li you had lived in Abuja. First of all, you're not from you're not from Abuja. I'm not from Abuja. You are yes, from Niger I'm from State. Kogi State. Kogi State. Yes, okay. I am. So that, that was one question as well. Yes. Why She's did I decide? Here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why did I decide not to run? But because I'm one of the people who think that if you're in Nigeria, you should be from wherever you want to be. Do you understand? If you've lived in a place long enough, if you were born there, if you've lived there all your life, if you've, if you've paid taxes, for example, so why should a man from Ogbomosho who's lived in Sokoto for 20, 30 years be told, go back to Ogbomosho? It doesn't make any sense to me. Wherever you are is home. You've put roots down there. But this has shown you that that's not what it is. I still, I still don't think... I, there is indigen politics in FCT. There was, and I was told very clearly, you know, Abuja is for the indigens, I am not. But at the same time, I don't think that that's what really matters. I actually think that long term, as we've seen in places like Lagos, we'll find people who are not indigens in quotes winning elections because what really should matter in an election is what your community thinks about you, whether they want you, whether they think you represent their values mm -hmm. and their vision. That's what it should so be. So how did the name Love Does Not Win Elections come about? Oh my God, very long story. I mean, as I was writing the book, I didn't have any interesting title. I, you know, I was calling it Experiences of a First Timer, something very bland and dry like that. And one day I was in a conversation with a few friends, you know, it was post 2015, because obviously I, this happened yes, 2014. Well, you, the book didn't come out till last year. So it was post-2015, and people were just still dreaming about a fashola ticket. You know, there were lots of com com Convolutions. Yes, about, you know, fashola and this, fashola and Buhari, fashola and this person. Fashola was in almost every ticket, because the whole country was in love with fashola. And, you know, they were going on and on. I said, you know, guys, yeah, fashola is loved, but, yeah, could he make the person he wanted be governor of Lagos State? Could he even make somebody that he thought was good, qualified, member of House of Reps? No, because love doesn't win elections. And I'm like, <gasps> That's it. That's the book. The book is, yeah, that's so the title. What does that knowledge do to us as the electorate? I mean, those of us who are, the, and for us also, who are also those who are educating people. What it tells us is that our party structures and our elections are designed to weaken our votes. That we're just here, the, what we do, this election fever that we're all gripped in, is to legitimize the decisions that the parties want to take. Can we, can we change that? We must change it. No, can we is what I asked. I think we can, but we cannot do it from only from the outside complaining. We're going to have to join the parties. We have to join the parties that are ruling and the parties that are not yet ruling. We're going to have to be a nation of card carrying members of parties. How whatever many of us? Is. Yeah, whatever party. We need to be more politically conscious. I've never seen a, we talk politics all the time, which is very different from participating at what level going to ward level meetings, we, we're not politically active. We just talk a lot. And what we need to do if we really want to change our country and our politics is get into the parties. Mm -hmm. You know, form the parties around your ideology, around your values. Is where, that's where we'll start seeing a reduction in the conversations about zoning, is he Christian, is he Muslim? Because we don't have the parties that are saying, no, it's not about ethnicity and turn by turn. It's about values. It's about who is empathetic. It's about who has the vision. It's about who has real integrity, not the fake integrity that we're being sold constantly in Nigeria. It's about talking about corruption in a way that we can say, why are Malaysia and South Korea corrupt? Corrupt societies, but they are thriving. They have light. They have water. So you what don't is think wrong corruption with us? Is our... It's not our key problem. It's incompetence. Incompetence is high up there. And it's a culture of seeing government and public service as a place to loot. It's cultural. People don't see government as a place to serve. They see government as a place to loot. You were and told even specifically, I was not your turn. You know that. Yeah, you know, you there's know. hierarchy. Mm, even if you wanted to run. So in fact, when I lost, everybody's prime advice was, eh, "Go and join Jisalo. Jisalo was the person, the incumbent. Go and join Jisalo's. Just see how people have no pride. Just see how people think that politics is just about positioning yourself." Go and join Gisalo's campaign. Or go and walk your way into Good Luck Jonathan's campaign so that you know, then they'll know you. I'm like, no, 